Welcome to For Love and Play. I'm matchmaker comic Yael Meisel. With me is comedian Keenan Weaver and Louis B. For Love and Play, the show about dating like a goddamn adult. We're going to discuss who to spend your time with for love or for play. Let's do it, boys. This show contains adult content for entertainment purposes. Listener discretion is advised. Not a doctor. Hey, we're back with another For Love and Play. Thank you for listening. I'm Keenan Weaver, your host. I'm here with my favorite people. Yael, what's going on? Mm. What up, son? All right. How you doing, Duke? How you doing? I'm right here. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, kicking the tires, lighting the fires. Let's do this. Let's do this. We got a very special, special episode today. We have a special guest with us. He's promoting a new book called Find Out What Men Really Want. It's what a man looks at a woman. All right, we have our author Frank and Ezekwe. How you doing, bro? Thank you so much. Sir. I'm here. <laughs> I'm good. All right. So, All right, so we we kind of looked over your book. We looked over your website. We see that you have a very extensive background. The book is really just to to kind of find out how men really what they want from ladies, right? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, uh, the book. So, so you know, men look at women for different reasons. You know, most of the time we just want to have sex with them. But uh, the modern man is more sophisticated than that, and we want to uh, delve into that whole aspect of you know the longevity that happens when you look at a woman properly before you venture into a relationship with them. So the book is really about. Uh, it's, it, it's almost set, set in a in a. We have a scenario where two men are talking and, and the woman is eavesdropping on them. So that's how the book is written. So I really, I really want the woman to get the real deal from how men talk, you know. Okay. And where is this kind of like inspired from? Because I feel you have a, a long background, just a little bit about yourself, right? You're sure. a British-American sure. writer and director, right? Sure. Yes. I was born in Nigeria and I moved to okay. England as a teenager. I went to college in England, studied design, and I was doing my master's in film when I moved out here in 2000. So I, I quit that and just directed my first feature, Snowflake and Hustle. So I think that, you know, the genre of romantic novels and fiction and nonfiction is really comes from the idea of a love story, which is the biggest American genre in cinema, uh, you know, cinematic genre. And so most films you watch are love stories. So this is an extension of what I usually do on the screen. And so when a man looks at a woman, is is almost like a, a literally version of something you would do with a script and a camera. Oh, nice. So you do, you, you put it in like a, a nonfiction realm um, right. to kind of it tell is. these stories, but on a exactly. written aspect. Yes, exactly. So like if you take a person like, and I, I think you guys are creative people, so you know, you do more than one thing. So if you take Kanye, for instance, uh, he's a producer, he's a rapper, he's a designer. Oh, he's done my that. best friend in my head, Frank. You don't even know. <laughs> Kimye, we in yeah. my head, we tight, yo. I hear you. Go right. on. Right. So, you know, he's a businessman, too. And, you know, yesterday Adidas announced that 8% of their profits went up in their shares. And then number two, instead of uh, under Nike and, uh, and um, Under Armour is number three. And they paid him $10 million for that deal. But, you know, Whoa. the numbers is like only 0.15% of what they're worth. So Kanye is worth a lot of, you know, dollars. But I don't think he has the business acumen to put together those kind of deals, you know. So and that's. You know, on the side, I, you know, I have an MBA, so I teach business on the side. So that's everything about me. Mm-hmm. But back to the book, I want to get people interested in this book because it's really a very zygous book. It's come at a time when, you know, you can go online and meet a thousand women in one weekend. Yes, you, know? you can. So, so it's very complicated now. So we need to have some new rules laid down to play. Now, okay. can, I, can I jump in and ask a question? Just getting cool. back to, to Kanye for a second. Sure. It's relevant, I swear. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's very interesting you said, you know, Connie is really not such a businessman. But right. look who his wife is. Look who his mother-in-law is. Right. What are these people? Whether you agree, disagree, like the Kardashians hate him, to take away their business right. ethic and their simple ability from heaven yeah. to have the brain to build wealth right. in entertainment, right. to say right. that it is less than genius would not be fair, I think. Oh, no, no, no. So, I think you got me wrong. No, I no, think, no, no, I think no, no. I'm so. saying, but like he, where he may lack in that creativity, his partner right. picks up and it's got right. the yin now flowing with the yang, where now right. he has the other half to make that powerful power uh, Exactly. Power. That's, that's exactly what Found I'm talking about. woman so. who brought the yes. bigger man out of him so he can stand as the king he is with the queen by his side. That's right. very important to touch on. Touch yeah, on. absolutely. I'm just talking about numbers. I'm talking about, right. you know, profits and profit sharing. So James Harden got 200 million for his deal. Kanye got 10 million. Kanye is the reason 
the company's overall brand image increased by 8%. This was announced two days ago. So if you look at the numbers, if you divide, they made, this is a $680 million company. If you divide 10 million, if you break down the ratio, he got 0.15% of that deal. I'm just saying that right. you know, he has to get to the point where he can get something the jury is getting for the effect he has on the marketplace. That's based on business. You know, so it's not about Cam Moore. He's, 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 he's very creative, he's super intelligent, but I just think that he needs to you know, ask for more. Right. There was just you're saying that there was just a misstep in that deal. But outside of business, because I, I definitely can tell you seem very averse in that realm. Let's go bring it back to relationships, because I hate talking about the Kardashians. I can't tell yeah. them apart. It's almost racist a little bit because they all look the same to me. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, good. back they to the book. So you're, you're explaining that we're in a very peculiar time, some a time that we've never seen before with technology yeah. and how relationships um technology has affected relationships how yes. how do you feel this whole genre of books that kind of want to show how a man thinks to women you know like steve harvey kind of brought that to the forefront and i've seen a lot yeah. of different books with that realm how do you feel about that genre and then what makes yours different okay thank you so much for that question because that goes straight to the crux of what i'm trying to talk about now steve's book and lala anthony's book deal with a certain age group, you know, 20 year olds, 25 year olds that maybe have seen a few things in their life and, and they're just trying to play the field and see what's going on and see how they can maybe become unwild in that part. But my book is specifically targeted to those that are at least 30, that have been through some serious relationships. They want to take it to the next level. They want to begin to understand the man from a very esoteric perspective. They want to really understand what it takes, the real elements that it takes to make something work, you know? So if you've been cheated on and then you think you want to break up, this book is not for you. I want someone that's not going to break up because they've been cheated on and find out exactly how they can fix that. Because if you're committed to someone, then you got to really go to school. You know, if you want to drive a car, you're going to have to get a driver's license. You go for tests. You need to test drive your relationship so you can get married. That's what I'm saying. You know, my book, this is, it deals with how men look at a plethora of women. From single women to married women to women to your ex to women with children to voluptuous women to skinny women to rich women to poor women to naive women to women of God to women of faith to women that are, that, that, that are addicted to drugs. So the, the book puts a man in front of different types of women. So because I believe that men judge women or at least bring them into a serious realm. By looking at their looks, their personality, and lifestyle. These are the three criteria that I think the men use to look at what women are about. You know? And so what makes the book different is the fact that um, I'm, the target audience is different. You know, the level of dexterity that we're coming across is different. You know, we're not approaching this from a very casual perspective. I think that a lot of the books out there right now are very airy and very popcorn. And so I wanted to go HB on them. I really wanted to go straight to the gunks, you know, so that's what this book is about. That's the temperature I have with this book. Okay, and I like I like that point. I, don't, I saw that when I kind of went over the book about the yeah. looking at how men look at women with like looks, yeah. personality and lifestyle. You kind of like formed yeah. kind of a, an attributes card like this yes. person, yes. how this person ap appears to the world through those yes. three different lenses is that combination. Okay. Right. Um, Absolutely. And, on your website, you saw you you gave examples. So you gave yes. Tyra Banks, and you put yes. her looks as irresistible. Yeah. You gave her right. personality as happy, playful, and soft, and yes. you gave her lifestyle with movies, yoga, and church. Kind of like you. explain where you like how you oh, derive to that and what that shows. Right. Okay, so that's an example. For instance, um, you know, there's, I've seen some articles on Halle Berry um, on Facebook a couple of days ago, and somebody was slamming her about how she can't keep a man and all these negative Oh, yeah, things. I read that too. You read yeah. that, right? Yeah, and I didn't like, I, didn't like, I, I, I posted it on my website, so on, my, on my, my Facebook, so my friends could comment on it. But I met Halle Berry before, right? And, uh, and she has diabetes, deaf in one ear, most beautiful woman in the world but beautiful in inside and outside. And there's nothing about her that strikes me as bad. So the issue here is not just that she's, she can't keep the man, is that women, women and men don't look at relationships from a scientific point of view anymore. We just go in and leap, with a leap of faith and expect things are gonna work out. 
But no, it doesn't work that way. You really have to look at the specific scientific elements that make something work. You know, Socrates was all about asking all these questions. And it turns out that these questions were more important than all the answers the world already had. So when it comes down to looks, what I'm saying is, as a dude, you know, you know, you know, when you look at women, you know, you can size them up in 10 seconds. In fact, some guys do it in two seconds, meaning, is she married? Is she a yes or no? Can I like her body? Can I get some sex? Can I get some conversation? What can I get from this situation? Am I with someone? You make all those decisions within 10 seconds and then you step up to her. Once you speak to her and she's positive, then you can begin to look at her personality. Does she smile? Is she laid back? Is she cool? Is she collected? Is she razzled? Is she, you know, is she, is she kept in space is she, is she still once you understand her personality then the next thing which might come six months down the line is her lifestyle if she's into partying and stuff and you're not it's not going to work if she's into if health and you're not it's not, it may not work because you got to make sure your your lifestyle is compatible so i'm coming from those three major concepts and that's how i think long term men determine who they're going to be with no, right Frank, can so I, yes go ahead oh sorry can i actually ask you a question that i think is interesting yeah. I wanted to know, what would you say, I'm sorry, hold on yeah. one second. No problem. No, there was a fire truck going, going no, by. No. Also known I want I I, to jump in with a question. Mm-hmm. Yes. What would it mean if someone yeah. says to his partner that he has an, um, an unhealthy sexual fixation with her? What do, what do you take that as? Can can you uh can you table that question out to that other part that I put you in? <laughs> what? Um, okay. T- t- table that specific question to the last the the survey section that I told you about. Okay, oh, okay fine, sure. Okay. Um. So yeah, uh, Frank, if you can get yeah, back sure. into the Tyra Banks example, how okay. did you derive with her kind of like attribute card of looks, personality, okay. and lifestyle? Explain how. Explain that okay. example. Okay, I gave two examples. Why? Because I didn't want to deal with race in this movie, in this, in this, in this book. I specifically took everything about race out. And when I was designing the site, I said to my people that I wanted two people that I like personally. One is the Bond girl from the, the movie Sky, um, Skyfall. Uh, she's a Bond girl, the French actress. And one was Tyra. And and I felt that having seen, you know, like when you watch Oprah for a long time, if you watch Oprah for a decade on TV, you kind of get a sense of who she is, right? So I've never met Tyra, but I use that as an example to let people see exactly what I'm talking about when men look at women. In other words, bring it up to a digital form so we have a, not an analog understanding of it, but a, a simple digital conception of what I'm talking about. So when you look at someone like um, Venus Williams, right, in your mind, you know, that you know what she looks like. So you get that out, that's visual. The second part is the personality, right? You've seen her interviews, you've seen the way she handles herself on the court. She's a little more laid back than Serena, right? So she's more inclusive, like, you know what I'm saying? So those are the things you can pick up just by looking at a woman. Then the third aspect is the lifestyle. You know, you don't see her on the news turning up. She's not with Drake, she's not with any rappers. She's very, very laid back, very, you know, stays in Europe most of the time. So you can tell just by looking at a woman, those three aspects, even before you speak to them, that's what that's about. So it's just a, it's almost like a graphic organigram of what the few, what what you could then project onto someone else. So you don't necessarily have to meet the person to to deduce and extrapolate no, I, exactly I, where they're coming from. I think that's a perfect example because those are kind of the things that you see that you said that right. the looks is the front forefront. Like Yael, how would you? Yeah. I'm gonna give you this one question about her. How would you describe Kim Kardashian's looks, personality, and lifestyle? Are you talking up to me? She's an yeah, angel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She's an angel. And girlfriend, ain't nobody bad at you for being star of your own movie. So, so looks is angel. I think she is one of the most beautiful women alive. Okay. What do you think about her personality? I think she carries herself with grace and with class. She's like, listen, I fucked up. I made some mistakes and I changed. Fuck you. I'm going to do my shit now. All right. And about her lifestyle? I think she deserves it. I think she worked for everything she has. I don't, that's that type of job, that type of fame. That's not easy. That doesn't that doesn't just come to you. That you okay. have to earn that. Louis, same three questions. I what about the Kardashians? About just Kim Kardashian. Uh, I, I like honestly, I don't think a leopard could change her spots. I mean, the, as soon as you come out with like a, you know, a, a, a sex tape and you you have you just you, just what do you think about her looks? I think I think she's hot. What about her personality? 
uh, I wouldn't. I can't. I can't really speak on that. I don't know her. Okay. And then what about her lifestyle? I think she's filthy. <laughs> okay. So Frank, I did that because I know that those two are on opposite ends of the spectrum about <laughs> one person. <laughs> yeah. And I want. I want you to just kind of explain. Uh, right. As a woman, what? Yes. In this book, what do they get out of finding their self awareness of these three categories and how men are are going to or women i guess are going to look at them okay how are they going to benefit from it right so here's the thing right okay so when you you imagine that you've met someone right and then six months down the line you start asking him about you know getting engaged or whatever it is you guys want to go to what the next level is and you find that he's kind of lukewarm about it that's because you had no idea what he was looking at when he first when he first met you you have no clue. You're clueless as to what the deal was in the beginning. It's like opening an account with Chase, right, or any bank. And then you get in, free checking, free saving, everything is cool. But when you start making big money, you start losing some money on the side. You start losing some, you know, you start getting some little charges on the side that you didn't know about. So the thing about relationships is when you first go in, nobody goes to courts and states exactly what they want from this relationship. We don't do that. And you don't know how no. much you're going to like someone. You know, you step in casually. Maybe you came in for just sex, but then you start falling in love. So now what you needed has changed. The way you perceive that person has changed. But if you knew for beforehand what the clues were, what men are looking at and what they want, you can ask them the right questions so that you can then t- this, uh, be in their mind and be ahead of the game in a, in a sense, position yourself to win. So if you meet a man that's six foot five, two million dollars in accounts, travels around the world, plays basketball, whatever, right? You know he runs into so many women every day. So you can't be asking him to walk down the aisle. It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I find that a lot of women get into these situations where they're dealing with men who they haven't actually analyzed yet. So when you read the book, you'll be able to understand what men are looking for. What are they looking at? What do they see in me? Okay, yes, you're hot. Your body is fine like Kim Kardashian, right? But after the sex, four hours of whatever you're doing, what's next? You do the four-hour sex for like 10 days, one month, two years, right? What's going to happen at the end of that? If he doesn't connect with you on those three points, you, you may not see the altar if that's what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Because men understand. You see, there's, there's a part of the book where he talks about when a man looks at a woman he wants to love. When a man looks at a woman he wants to have a child with. When a man looks at a woman that reminds him of the future. You know, so when you look at a woman, you get different emotions. The first one is sex, but that's the most primary. That's the most basic. On a sophisticated level, men can see a lot more women. Some women can make your dreams come true faster. You know, so men see a lot. You know, women just see, think that oh, we all want sex. But I want them to start understanding that beyond all the f- superficial things, men want things that are a little bit more latent. And when you can connect to that, then you're not going to have so many unsuccessful relationships around you. Mm-hmm. Now, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I completely agree with what you're saying, right. um, especially right. because uh, to that point of finding what you need out of your relationship, if it was sex at first and then sometimes that changes and grows into other needs, every relationship is based on some level of dependency. It's just like yeah. uh, a paternal relationship is this child needs you to provide for me to survive. Like that's yeah. the dependency. Same thing yeah. with, with romantic relationships. It can be emotional. It can be financial. It can be a variety of things. Um, and if yes. you know what your need is going in, that goes back yes. to my whole philosophy is always being honest. Um, I like yes. one point that this kind of stems from that I call in your book. And you said, when a man has money and power, women are the next step. Don't expect right. him to get married too fast. When it's time to settle, he can't fight it. Can you expand right. on that? Because you kind of touched on it when you were talking about like the ball yes. player. You can't ask yes. him to marry him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. Because, you see, when, when, a, when a guy that has money, right? Okay, let's take some example. Let's take someone like Maxwell. <laughs> I'm hoping that he's not gay, you know? <laughs> so let's, I'm using a good example of someone that women love so much, right? So let's say he wants to get married, right? It's going to be hard to make a guy like that fall in love with you, except if he falls in love with his own. There's a gentleman called Leon Ware, right? Leon Ware wrote something, something for Maxwell. 
He also wrote the album for Marvin Gaye called I Want You. I think it's the most romantic album ever made. And I, I went, I read the book of Marvin and I was working on a film called Luck Looking for Marvin and wrote the script, everything we were about to start shooting. And I found Leon away and I went to his house in Marina del Rey and I started talking to him. And he introduced me to his wife and his wife was the former C, uh, CEO of MCA Records. She was the one that released a bodyguard soundtrack with, with Houston. Italian lady, you know, really kind of heavy set, you know, pretty lady. And I said to him, what's the secret? When she walked away, I said to him, what's the secret of his long marriage? And he said to me, listen, brother, this chick got to love you more than you love her. <laughs> That's the bottom line. You know, this chick has got to love you more than you love her. My wife loves me more than I love her. I'm a bad boy, but she loves me. So the thing about it is, you know, you can't make a guy like that, that's, that has all the power and money in the world. You can't force him down the line. He has to come to you and get down on his knees and yeah. want to be with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you yeah. can't push that, right? The same way you with a top model. You can't force someone to feel that way. Mm-hmm. They have yeah, to can. just, it's, it's, if it's in their soul, they're going to grab it. Yes. They're going to surrender to you. You know, that's yeah. it. You know, so people like, when it's time, it's time. That's what I meant by once I it's time. I think so important. I don't mean to jump in, but like, I want yes. the women listening to this show. The reason he's here, ladies, is because I say this all the time. This is a man we've never met. Right. His agent reached out to me and I was like, oh, my gosh. It's, it's like the universe connecting King, King, King Druid spirits. Really, right. like people with the yep. same mission, whatever it is right. you're hoping to do, if you're looking for that deep in your soul love, we want to help yep. you filter through the shit so you can right. actually find it and touch it and, and, right. and live in its manifestation. Yes, absolutely. This is, the, this is the spoken truth. This guy is, this man is giving you the gospel, ladies. <laughs> Believe everything <laughs> he's saying. No, I mean, your language is beautiful, Thank I'm you. saying, but you're speaking to both right. men and women, but it's women who need to hear you spiritually because Absolutely. we fight with all of these irrational feelings that prevent us yes. from living in the truth. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And this is showing you how to embrace that truth. And I think it's beautiful yeah. and just so important. So very- well, to, to this Thank point, you, actually, I want, I want to kind of analyze it through your prism because you right. have time and time again on our show stated yeah. about like a, a time frame of love, a time frame of marriage yeah. where, yeah. where when we hear this, that you can't force either one. I don't even want to put this on the man. You can't force right. anyone no. into right. like a schedule. So that's why I really hate those 365 oh. days before marriage or 10 years. We've already. <laughs> <Hold on. been laughs> so, so Frank, let me give you a yeah. right. I'm going to touch on something that I, yeah. that I'm dealing with recently, very recent. Okay. It's fresh. Okay. Okay. Um, long story short, two years short. ago, I met someone, yeah. it was casual and we okay. were friends for a year and about a, a year, a little bit, yeah, about a year ago, we started okay. dating on and off and broke up with me. And it was one of those things that you have to realize, Frank, I've been setting people up and dating coaching, like, like yes. I, I'm an, I'm a legit, the real deal. I'm yes. a mask maker, but it's right. when you, when you look at other people and you step outside of that, you're able to right. see it's such a different picture when you're seeing two other individuals and you're not emotionally invested. You're basically the consultant that's here to fix yes. it. But what yes. when it's you, mm-hmm. you know, I'm divorced. I have children. I'm a very hard pill to swallow. I work in development, industrial, yes. like the real deal, foreclosure shit, real estate. Yes. I'm a stand-up comedian. I own a few businesses. I can be a very, hot, a very tough pill to swallow. I'm yes. in shape. I have my shit together. I'm smart. I'm a tough right. person to date, and I get that. I usually date right. important people that are amazing at whatever they do. Right. This one got me, and yes. I gave this person more time than I would ever. I, I would say also held on to hope longer because it was also I was looking at him as I respect you as a man. Right. I appreciate you. We did. Right. It started casual, and then it, it started to evolve. But that's just it. Every time it would yes. it would almost be evolving into something substantial. You know, when you would actually now incorporate you into my life and vice versa, that's when it comes to the standstill and he just emotionally backs out. And the last time this happened, which was recently, after about two months of things really being a little, you know, solid and uninterrupted, like you actually would say, oh, shit, it's going somewhere. Look at that. Wow. I was patient. I held my horses. I chilled the hell out. I didn't spill the beans. I didn't talk about my feelings. I got to know him over an evolution of time until recently. I thought, boom, I had done I've done it the right way. And then again, as soon as it came to something of, you know, it's it's time to talk on a project we're going to work on. 
Yes. It just shut down. And I thought to myself, right. that's it. I've done yes. all I can do. I can move no yes. further. This right. is when I bow out stage left. Yes. I don't hate you. I'm not mad at you. You're the best person in my life. You fill my soul with something no one ever has before you. You are the one yes. person I would have waited. And I did. But I right. feel like this is it now. Now I see. Right. And I know. And now I right. move no further. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I feel like to mean. come back from this now, I'm just yes. an idiot. I'm doing this to myself at this point. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. You know, I hear your story and it's a very common one, right? Because right. I, I just, it's so yeah, not I, unique, is it? It is so <laughs> fucking simple. Ladies and gentlemen, right. we are not novels. We are not unique. <laughs> We're not yes. special. We all right. suffer the same shit. And we're right. bleeding right. and crying in the corner as if we have right. no one else. And it's right. everyone. Yes, it's everyone. And see, I describe it as being on the wrong way and not being able to take off. So you're just taxiing around and control towers have been giving you the go ahead to take off, right? So you, most people are on the wrong way in their relationships. It's not going to take off. It's just going to be on a taxi for 10 years. It's going to be right. taxiing for 10 years. And, and, and I feel sorry for those kind of situations okay. because, you know, I, I was talking to a friend a few weeks ago and they told me that they have a kind of relationship where it's just sex. She knows this dude. They cut a deal. <laughs> All she wants from him is sex. All he wants from her is sex. They set a day, they go in, they get it done, it's over. They don't talk about the movies, they don't talk about the elections, they don't yeah, talk about emotions. Not that. Not this <laughs> so, so, no, so, so, totally, yeah, and, completely and different. I, and, I, and, I thought, and I thought to myself, that's a little bit extreme, right? But then, but then in a world where people are not being truthful or being honest with themselves about what they want or not being aware of how easily what they want can change and how quickly they should communicate that to their partners, it makes sense to just cut a very simple deal. You know, what I call a no interest deal, <laughs> you know, so, right. but back right. to your story, <laughs> you know, yeah, but back to your when story. I spoke to, when I spoke to your, um, your agent, when we set this up, yes. you know, she explained to me some insight and background about you. And I said, you know what, I, yes. I have at, at that moment, this was a yes. few weeks ago, I was yes. still kind of in the thick of it. And then right. I just kind of something between hither and yon, I yes. just changed. And I, you know, yes. and she right. said, oh my gosh, this is what Frank deals yes. with. And I thought, yes. I yes. feel like Absolutely. this Letting go was the right thing, right? Six yes. more months, I've, just, I've, he's not going to love me any more in six months than he does today. Am I wrong? Yes, you're not wrong. And it's not no. even about love. It's not I even know. about love. Because people think it's about love all the time. It's really about very simple things. Like, for instance, you know, I remember I went to a coffee shop. I live in a, my office is in San Pedro. My agent and I, we have an office in San Pedro City in Los Angeles County. And I remember um, going to a coffee shop called Godmothers, and this guitar player, really, really cool guitar player, you know, um, skinny white dude, like, you know, like, um, like Brad Pitt, you know, kind of guy. But he plays really soulful guitar. And I remember one time I met his wife, and I even wrote about his wife in a book. And, you know, I said, because when she walks in, like he plays guitar and people just leave a little change for him and stuff. I think he's a professor of music somewhere. And this guy plays really beautiful music. I filmed him so many times on my phone. And I'll send it to my girl, and my girl will laugh and stuff. But the day I met his wife, I realized why he was writing all that good music. She's a real lady. You know right. she's, a real, she's a real lady. I mean, she walked in. She, she reminded me of a young Barbara Streisand. When she, when she walked into the coffee shop, when she walked into the coffee shop, now this is a place where you have rockers, gangsters, skaters, everybody comes to that shop. But the day she came in, she had a simple, like, lilac dress, very, very soft colors. And when she walked in, she smiled at everyone and sat down very quietly. I mean, the people that sell coffee, right, the baristas, usually have to go to the bar. But they came to her. They said, what would you like? Just her presence alone was enough for everybody to stop cursing. Just her presence alone was enough for you to tell yourself, this is not the day when you fuck up. Okay. Right. This is the day. <laughs> this is this is the day where you keep the whole gangster thing roll low because now he brought his woman to the spot. And so and she's so classy and so fine and so open at the same time. You know, so so the thing about it, the way men perceive women later down the relationship is that some of the characteristics he liked you for in the beginning might begin to get a rough around the edges. Like well, let me, me ask I don't you. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. He's the one who said to me that he has that he says that he spends an unhealthy amount of time uh, fantasizing about me, and that yes. he has um, an unhealthy sexual fixation. Like, 
I was, I've been so sad about this. I called Keenan yesterday and cried. <laughs> Keenan is my, Keenan's my, right. Keenan's which, my rock. Which, by Keenan the way, is my rock. And these are my right. privileges, ladies. Keenan Damn. will not. When, when am I? What am I then? Few no. women. You're <laughs> like my baby actually, daddy. I'm, I'm like the what? Mm. You're my okay. ride and die in other areas. When I need the truth, I go to Keenan. I tell you so, the truth. No, when I need, you know what I'm saying, Frank. No, I when I need the right. truth. Yeah, the when I need truth. someone to look at my soul and be like, I love you, kids, yeah. so I'm going to spit you hard. Like, right, right. I said to Keenan, <laughs> like, the one yeah. thing that's always been amazing is, like, we just yeah. know how to, like, we know how to make love. We've always had an right. intense, passionate, beautiful, amazing, intimate, romantic life. Right. And yes. it's, it's like for you to be complaining about what other men pray for. That you've actually yeah. found a woman that you yeah. are enamored with being with yeah. sexually, who in, who yes. stimulates you mentally, emotionally, spiritually. We're we're yes. both religious the same way. Right. Right. We we right. love art. We like being outside. I'm saying on paper, you would say right. these as a matchmaker. If I yes. took myself out of this, I would put these two people together. And it's at the end of the day, I think that right. the universe just said no. His heart yes. just doesn't feel it. I don't think it's. Right. I don't. And I don't even think he's a malicious asshole. That's just it. Right, I don't right. think this was just about getting laid for him because he's gorgeous. Right. He doesn't need me right, for the right. P-U-S-S-Y Jesus. No way. Right. Yes, yes. You know what you I know, mean? So, yeah, am I, I exactly am yeah. reading this correctly? Yes. I want to I wanna talk about the first point you made, which is about this guy that finds you, you know, that sees you as a huge fantasy. Now, the thing about that, if somebody says that to you, right, some women usually get offended or they might feel a different way about it. The truth is, it's a compliment. That's one thing. But the second thing there, the second thing there, it's it's okay for him to feel that way and to see you as an object of desire. That's fine. It's like telling Marilyn Monroe, I, you know, I want to get laid with you. You know, that's fine. She hears it all the time. That's great. But here's the thing, right? For his, to, for him to say it's unhealthy means that he needs to check himself a little bit because that means that he's not only obsessed. But if you get into other levels that are a little bit more um, unhealthy for you and him, if left in the same space too long, because you have no idea, because that's, I call that extreme thirst. That's what you call it in LA. <laughs> it's called, <laughs> right. extreme, you know, extreme thirst. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you know how to draw the line, you know, because, you know, guys like that might be extreme a little bit because there has to be a little bit more going on in your life for you to not to avoid saying things like that to another woman to a woman you know yeah that's you, it's it's a thin line you know what i'm talking feel, about i feel like he's dealing with something that has nothing to do with me i feel <laughs> exactly. really am I, frank am i wrong yeah. but that's what I, that's exactly <laughs> what i told her was that yeah. word unhealthy was a red flag <laughs> like <laughs> that was an automatic yeah, guys, red flag like you don't even don't have, sometimes you don't even have to like take yeah. the contents of a full phrase you can just yeah. break down certain words <laughs> And <laughs> unhealthy just stuck out so big to me. I'm like, all right. Like, mm, all right, boo. Cool. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, how many people, when yeah. I'm like taking on a client or counseling a, a relationship, the first thing I ask them, you know, it's like, you have to be yeah. sexy for each other. Like this, this gentleman yeah. and I made mm -hmm. being attractive and attracted yes. to each other a priority. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like, yes. 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 we listened to each other and communicated on that deep, like, right. passionate level. It wasn't, this right. was not just about getting booty for either one of us. Right. I just, I, I'm shocked. It, it was like thinking to myself, oh my gosh, so many men are right. saying, <laughs> I need to do something to, to want yes. to be, you know, I wish I had the fire for this woman that I have children with, you know. Right. Where is where did it go? And you have yeah. it, and you're saying, "Oh, it's too. I don't. I don't want it. What? I don't." Yeah, yeah but that's because there's other things from it. it that's kind of like what Frank said. Like when you have those, when you have those no interest relationship, and you guys work on great on a bed level, but on yes. on solid ground level, nothing else works. Nothing you know those type, exactly. <laughs> those type yeah. relationships where you just oh, need yeah. to be on a mattress. Yeah, <laughs> that is not this. Right. Right, right. One you know, morning, okay. we woke up and had our coffee together and sat there. And Keenan, you know how I feel about houses. We sat there for an hour and poked around and looked at Zillow and all sorts of apps. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, not only are you amazing here, you're amazing there. I know how to sell property. You know how to market it. Holy shit. We're sitting on gold because we work right. well together. Yes. We play so nicely in this room. Imagine what we could do out there. Yes, absolutely. I that saw sense. this as, oh. as a man that I can respect, make money with. Like, I'm a mm -hmm. queen, come be my king. Seriously. Right, right. 
So I would love you like him like twelve times though. So yeah, yeah. Let me ask you on no, that. It, that trap. The right me, it can be. It can be a trap I'd because only want sometimes a to be there because they emotionally yeah. want it. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. It sometimes can be a trap because when a few things of personalities click yeah. and the whole doesn't click, you fall into traps where you're saying yes, bed is good, and yes, business is good. But right. what about the relationship have you described that doesn't sound like the perfect business partner rather than the perfect husband? Yes. You see, that, that's I mean, a, you that's want a me to elaborate? Let, Frank, I mean, I, should uh, I elaborate? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, go should ahead. I touch yeah. on other yeah. reasons why I feel yeah. this is a good match? Yes. yes. We like the same little mundane things. He's the type of person I would want my children. I have two beautiful twin boys that are three years old. He's the type of man I would want to see my children become. He's interesting. He's educated. He's sweet. He brings out a sweetness and a softness into me that very few have ever been able to bring out. This is a person who encourages me, makes me want to build it to the top. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is a person who brings exactly. out... Yes. Right. You know, he, he shook awake the fierce businesswoman that I was at 22 when I single handedly right. changed an industry with my silly idea to sell Jewish wigs on Facebook. Right. I'm saying this is a person who this is not just random casual sex. This is not. Right. I'm saying like we sat there the other night and talked about how uncomfortable non-Jewish funerals make us because we put our dead in the ground right away and we are satisfied right. with that. I'm saying this is a person, it's just like, oh my God, right. wow. Okay. I, have, I have a question for you. Not not, not sure. personal question, but it will throw a question into the air, right? Okay. You know, when, okay. you, when you see scenarios like this, it, it's always good to learn from it when it's over, right? Not saying that it's over, I'm just saying that, you know, it makes sense to kind of realize what it was that happened, you know? Right. I think right. Um, right off the bat, I think, first of all, one needs to know for sure where someone else is going. So, you know, right. if you're a woman but and you I meet a man. Feel, I never meant to feel this way. This just kind of okay. happened. Sure. Right. So okay. so you okay. want to know, number one, where is he heading in his life? What stage of his life is he at? Because 20-year-olds don't act like 30-year-olds and 30-year-olds don't act like 40-year-olds. And they all want different things. So when you look at a man that's 40, right? And you and you want to be with this man. You have to find out what exactly is going on in his own personal landscape. So while you're dealing with your own life and your twins and all the things he fits into correctly, you know, what is his vision? What of yeah. his life? Where is he trying to go? And how do you fit into that? Because if you don't fit into that, nothing happens. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, so I'm, I have a friend. Yeah, I have a friend that, that, uh, that you know, she was engaged to this dude. And she uh, bought a ring for this guy for their wedding for their wedding and you know she's got money he doesn't have that much money but bottom line is the wedding was called off because of that problem so the man is supposed to go find the ring right so not the woman you know you can't buy yourself an engagement ring the man has to get it with whatever his budget right so that, got that it baby Exactly. That disrespect ended that relationship. And the same way, I've seen so many relationships where, where the woman is moving right ahead. Oh, he's the one. He's this, he's that, he's that. But you haven't sat down and asked this man what his life is supposed to be about. What right. does he they're want? Not, See, they're not paying you know, attention to the other side. It, it, Bring it, up a good exactly. point. Um, yeah. it, the, the other week, spoiler alert, if you're a Scandal fan, whatever, um, yeah. there was a big scene that was hilarious to me. Um, and right. basically, the president and Olivia, uh, you know, are finally open with their relationship. And to make whatever this political problem go away, they, right. they need to get married finally, right? And right. the president does this extravagant, rolls petals all over the place. He finds, like, I don't know, it was probably, like, Susan B. Anthony's engagement ring or something. And right. he proposes to her. And okay. she goes, I, I didn't want this. And his reply right. was, which I thought was great, was, you think I wanted this? You think I wanted to search for this ring? You think I wanted to get this string quartet and all this stuff? No, right, I didn't right. want to do that. Yeah. Men don't want to do this. And she goes, well, yeah. why'd you do it? Because I want yeah. you. Because I love yeah. you. So right. I like that point of when you said uh, when it's time yeah. to settle, he can't fight it because yeah, yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. it's, it's something. There's been one woman that legit, I, it, yeah. it speaks volumes to me because yeah. I yeah. have always been super ambitious. It has always been right. something else more important than whatever yes. relationship I was with, except for yeah. this one girl who yes. 
I could not fight it. So it was just right, right. that <laughs> you got to know what that what that man's yeah. plan for you is yeah. while yeah. you're dreaming about oh he does this and he's that and yeah, he yeah. does this he mm-hmm. does that. Right. If his if his response isn't the same way to yours. Yeah then it's yeah. never gonna, you're never going in the same direction. That's right. why I walked away from this recently. I said, I've given this a year and I right. know in my whole heart that right. giving this any more time, it doesn't right. matter that you're wonderful and you're sweet and you're kind and you're, right. you know, you're the right. really like I, yeah. I've, I've walked away smarter and healthier and I think almost wholer because it's like, I've learned something about myself. I've learned what I, I've learned that what I want. I've learned that, yeah. I can compromise on certain things. I've yeah. learned a little bit what I want and I really appreciate yeah. him for that. But I, right. I just know I don't, I didn't leave anything here. So, I didn't yeah, yeah. leave anything here. It's time to leave. So yeah, yeah, let me ask you this and I'm actually going to tie it into one of the other points in the book. Um, right. You said I gave this a year. Um, and again, I had up yeah. top, I could, I kind of had, I have a problem with this schedule. Cause when, when you set a schedule, you're setting yourself. No, no, no. For, this wasn't. Me, okay. I get it. I get it. I'm trying to, trying to bring in all the book stuff. So okay. when you set a schedule, it sets you up for a type of disappointment. It's just like if someone wants to say, oh, I'm such and such of an age and I want to get married by 28. That's an automatic disappointment if you don't become, if you <laughs> are single at 28. Like It doesn't right. matter what your life, yeah. what your personality, you've already just yeah. created this disappointment. So right. when, yes. you say, when you say, um, I gave I've this given a, it a year, year. Okay. right? I, I'm trying to tie it in. Another point in the book is people are always quick to leave relationships. Those that yes. stay in relationships have to work at it to make it stronger. You can't leave right. it. You can't leave it like it's a shopping mall. Frank, can you kind of like tie in? You see what I'm trying to bring in there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's a difficult thing, you know, to be in a relationship. And, you know, I remember when Sandra Bullock uh, left Jesse James, I think is his name, you know, after he cheated, you know, so. But, you know, when you look at the guy, he's a bad guy. You know, he's a bad looking guy. You know what I mean? Bad. I mean, he's a cool guy, but he's got tats everywhere. You know, you know, he's a bad boy. So it's like if you leave someone like. Uh, what's his name? Steve McQueen from back back in the day from Bullet. You already know he's a bad boy, so you can't blame him for certain things. So, you, if you leave a man when he cheats, right? You might miss up on some, you might miss the real deal that's beyond all of that. So, what I tell people is prepare yourself because human beings are imperfect. You know, I've cheated before so many times, and I don't like the feeling of cheating. When I come back to my partner, this is back, not with my current partner, but back in the day, right? So, you know, uh, when you come back home, it doesn't feel long, good. Long, because long, long time ago. It, <laughs> it doesn't feel good. So, so, but I've learned over the years that, you know, when, when I've, I've been cheated on, and when, when a woman cheats on me, right, I usually know it's my fault, or, I, or maybe she's just horny, right? Women so everybody cheat for has, emotional reasons now. Yeah, yeah, no? yeah, yeah, women yeah. cheat women. Women don't need a reason to cheat. You know, the, the thing is, if the opportunity is there, human beings will cheat. That's the bottom line. You know, so but when they cheat, they're just imperfect. They're proven they're imperfect. It doesn't mean because see, listen, we value sex so much that anything that happens around sex, we judge and we condemn immediately. But you see, sex is just only ten percent of the deal. Is is everything else that happens with a relationship outside a triangle? That's the essence of a man and a woman. You know, everything we're basing everything based on the box. But you take the box away, then you have real life. You know, if you take the sex away from your relationship and you sat with a man and you travel with him, you didn't have sex for a whole month. Then you could find out what exactly you're dealing with. You now, know, because that's, that's you know what I'm saying? Because now you really just, you know, get, you go ahead, sir. Yeah, I definitely understand what you're saying. And it goes to like that Cat Williams bit that but, you, you had like a 90 percent dude and you cheat right. a 98 percent dude and he cheats on you. That's just two percent. You leaving just because of two percent. Like, I get it. But yes. You saying this, I can already hear like just the scours of women yelling, <laughs> pressing delete on our episode. And if a man that doesn't have like that doesn't have your vernacular, that doesn't have your your <laughs> accent, and so right. on, like you, you you're saying it, it sounds cool. Anybody else right. trying to say you're gonna leave your your relationship because your man cheat? How do you even defend that? Okay. Like that's okay. That's, okay, look look at this. Denzel Washington said he would never leave his wife. But she can under, he can understand if she leaves. Now, now this, this is a guy that many women want. You know, there's a book, a magazine called Cigar Aficionado. In February 1998, I was going to school in London, right? 
and I, got, I stayed in England for 10 years before I moved here. And I saw this magazine on the shelf. Cigar Aficionado was nine pounds sterling. That's like $18. And I begged the lady at the, at the convenience store, like the news agents, because Denzel was on the cover. So I wanted, to, I, wanted to buy, I wanted to buy this magazine so bad, right? Denzel was on the cover. And I asked her, can you save it for me for a week? And she did. And I eventually I, I got 18 pounds together and I bought it. I still have that magazine today. And in that magazine, Denzel describes a scene where he's in New York City. He's in his hotel room. His wife is in L.A. All the kids have called, and he's giving them everything they wanted. They want money from the credit cards, this and this. Somebody wants a car. Somebody wants money for clothes and shopping. He gives everybody all they want. His assistant is a beautiful lady. She's next door in a hotel room, sexy as hell. There's thousands of women downstairs in the lobby shouting Denzel, and he's in his room alone with a big fat cigar, and he fires it out, and he realizes what his loneliness is about. You know, so this is a guy that has pussy lined up, you know, but still he maintains and not doing the bad thing of cheating on Pauletta, right? For just that brief moment. So, you know, someone like Denzel goes through so many moments like that where I've read so many things where he walked into a hotel room, you know, and there were so many women in the lobby that he had to go to the kitchen and he ate in the kitchen with the chefs. You know, it was so cool. All the chefs were like, we ate with Denzel today. He came through the kitchen. So when men avoid cheating, right, it takes, it's a swag. It's actually sexy by itself. And that's something I realized north of being 40 years old, right? I realized that later. Now, we can't jump at everything. One old man told me, Frank, listen, you can't, there's not enough dicks in this world to handle all the ass in this world. So what we have to do (laughs) is be grown up like us. (laughs) You have to realize that, you know, you need to chill, right? And I I, I also, I say this sometimes. There was a guy that I saw, and he's in the 60s. His name is Walt. And his wife is super sexy. I said to him, don't you mind that your wife is this sexy? Walking around everywhere, looking hot. And he said to me, listen, Frank, she's giving me four kids. We have great retirement accounts. We go to Europe every year. If she wants to play with her personal trainer once in a while, let her have the dig. Come on, man. I'm a boss. You got to bust up, Frank. You got to bust up and let this lady play a little bit. So that's a different level of pimp in the game. That's a different level of game, you know, because he's 65 now. He knows that the triangle is all. That's not all there is. You know, he said, Frank, look at my suits, man. These are canales, man. My wife picks these things. She does great things for me in this family. Let her have a little dick. That's nothing, man. I'm a boss. <laughs> you, know, you know, so, so the different levels to this game, that's what I'm trying to explain. So it's not that women should be screaming that I'm saying when the man cheats, you shouldn't, you shouldn't leave. I'm just saying grow up. Let's get more intelligent about this. Now, let me say this. It's a double standard because when women cheat, men can't even figure it out. They go crazy. They run. <laughs> it's like one of my cousins says, when, 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 when money leaves the relationship, romance jumps out of the window and commits suicide. You know, <laughs> so you no, know, there's no love without romance. There's no romance without finance. That's how he says it. So you know, this, these are so many different complex topics. But with relate, with respect to what you asked me initially, I believe that that you know we should wait, train ourselves to show some restraint when we come to a point of no return, and ask ourselves, is this what we really want? Can we really forgive this person beyond this? Because, you know, my ex, I have a son, he's five, and his, his, his mom, you know, we had some infidelity issues in our relationship. I cheated, she cheated. The difference was I was a bad guy. Her diff- the, the, with hers, it didn't come out. She was innocent. Until after she, we broke up, she told me, okay, I banged this person, this person, and this person. And I said to her, I know you banged these four guys. It's not a problem. My problem is that I accepted that I banged ten people. And I took the pain, but you didn't take the pain during the relationship. You know what I'm saying? I was a bad guy, but you were supposed to be Virgin Mary, but you were smashing all these people too. So right. that's the thing. So the people are not really honest. Like you go into an elevator and you see people in the elevator and you start talking about the weather. What you really want to say is, damn, you look hot. You have what's, what's your number? But, but, <laughs> I, hate, but that. I hate small talk. Like I can't stand it. <laughs> Right. You know, so in, instead of that, you ask about it, you talk about the weather and everything else that's going on. But what you really want to do is, you know, pull their pants down, you know, and yep. and, and there's some some women that just have that thing that makes you not think about anything else but sex. Some women just have that kind of body and men cannot resist that. They, they're going to ask for it immediately. And some women have it. Some You don't even have to be gorgeous or well dressed. Some women just reek of it. 
you know, right. you know, they just have it naturally, you know, exactly. You know, they just, they just look like they want it right there, you know, nothing else, you know. And so men are more, uh, you know, you run into that all the time and you have to show some, you know, maturity and restraint when you run into things like that. And so, so, you know, we're human and we're not perfect. So we're always going to have this conversation. A man would never stop looking at women. You know, that's one thing about the title of this book. Men would never stop looking at women. We're always doing it. And we don't speak to a lot of the women we look at. We, we speak to very few women. Out of the hundreds we might look at, we speak to very few. We actually, you know, express ourselves or walk up to very few. So many men will look at you in your lifetime, but very few will step up. That's because they've realized that you fit those elements that they want. I'm gonna sometimes leave it right don't there. you think they're just enjoying the visual view, though? They're just, you okay. know, <laughs> sometimes, no, really, like sometimes you could just be a part of their five-minute vacation. They think you're beautiful. It's not anything that has anything to do with you yes exactly but but no 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 when men look at women we look for a reason when i say when I, you know, we might have our wife with us our girlfriend or whoever but the thing is it doesn't mean we're not going to look at something that if, if you if i see a woman that looks exactly like my girl i'm going to look at her and then i'll look at my girl and say and then she knows what i'm looking at <laughs> she knows i'm looking at something that looks like her you know so we laugh about it and that's over but Before, that's a perfect that, that's a perfect example to one of the points that you have is men look at women all the time but most yes. men don't give time to the women that they are really attracted to so exactly that's I'm glad. I'm glad you dug into that book, man. I really appreciate you mean, it. I, I, I'm one of the hosts that I do. I try to do my research. <laughs> yeah, you did more than research, man. You really. <laughs> I'm really impressed. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. You know, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes, you, you're right. You know, well, it's not a five minute vacation. No, no, no. We look at women for. Very, <laughs> we don't just look at women casually. If they catch our attention, we're gonna look for longer if we can. You know, if, if she has a man, of course we have to respect that and not look too much. But generally, we want to look. We look hard. You know, we're always looking. You know, and then, you know, most women don't look back at us. But if you know, women are, are pretty, so they step out and they can catch any man. Men have to work on this. Men have to really, really put in the effort for women to even give us a second look. See, yeah, I don't even care if you're, the guy I got, that I'm I with though looks at other women because again, like that five minute mental vacation that <laughs> you know, I, I maybe I'm way too understanding could very well be, but yes. I don't, um, I don't see a problem with it when yes. it's coming from a good place. Yes, yes. So, Frank, on your website, you also have like another section where it seems like you're trying to do like this two way conversation um, yes. with, with whoever yeah. subscribes to you, I guess. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of just give a sample, kind of play how that conversation would go if someone filled out this form that you have on your website as if it's Yael and kind of just have that two way conversation with her for a few minutes um, mm -hmm. to end out the podcast. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Oh. <laughs> so so here's the thing right um with that with that um field the field the way that fields were designed in that page um what i was trying to do was to form a personal um conversation with not just the people that buy my book but those that want some questions answered right and one of the ways to do that is to get their story right and there's an app called uh, it's called Disruptive Media. One of your boys on the, on the East Coast, Ryan Leslie, designed this app and it allows your customers, for you to see your customers and view uh, sales and clients and all that kind of stuff. So I subscribe to it. You know, I have it on my phone. So when someone buys my book, I know they bought my book. And so it's a way, it's a direct customer business model. And that's what I was trying to do with that section of my website so that I can know who's reading this book, how I can really help them genuinely help them in their own lives, right? And so um, I don't think that it fits us doing it on air because okay. it's, pri it's private in the sense that I'm asking questions a little more intimate, not sexually explicit, but intimate about what's going on in their lives. So I don't want to kind of put Yale out there and, and well, go through that her. scenario. Ask her, because <laughs> I, I know her answer. She's an open book, so... I would say just a sample. Like you don't have to go as okay. deep as what you, you have to go doing. deep, right? Yeah. As if okay. it was your regular client, but just to okay. kind of give a sense, so that okay. if someone else from listening this episode goes to your website yeah. and wants to do it, they have kind of like a sense yeah. of what they can expect. Okay, okay. Let me go into it real quick. Just give me two seconds. Let me just log into it. So I'm asking these questions, right? Um, I'm basically saying thank you for experiencing my book and being a part of this moment. Um, this is a two-way conversation, and it's going to be private. So basically, I'm saying, what's your name? What's your phone number? I will call you. So if you buy my book, I will actually call you. 
Uh, if you're in LA, I'll come wash your car. Uh, please tell me your story. <laughs> you know, uh, please tell me your story. Um, what kind of relationship do you have now? That's the next question. And what kind of relationship do you want? Um, how would you describe your looks, personality, and lifestyle? And what is your idea of a beautiful day? What three things make you happy? How do, do you have any questions for me? So when I go to this section that says, tell me your story, let's take, for example, the story that Yale told us, right? So that's where, that's where she's at right now in her life, right? Yeah. Who is she? So when I, when I do my seminars, I usually ask people, who are you? Who are you? You have to define yourself. In marketing, we do this all the time. You have to define yourself in 30 seconds. Right? So yeah, can you do that in 30 seconds? Can I define who I am in 30 seconds? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. So, so basically, um, what would the reason for that is so that you know who you are first. And then if you're a, a beautiful single mom with two kids, a degree in finance and a real estate company, a comedian and a radio host, that's who you are. Right. And then, you know, you have to know what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a relationship that's long term, yeah. that fits you know, that fits the geography of the states. And you want someone that's not going to travel too much, that's going to stay within the geographical no, area. You know, it's okay. I'm saying I don't need to be, I, I, I'm not one of those women that needs to be in your lab. You know, do you see what I mean? Right, right, right. right. So, so, for instance, if your man moves to Japan for two years, what would happen to you? Okay, so that's why these days it's important to know who you're dealing with. That's so important because if the person you're talking to in their heart wants to live in Spain for one year, two years from now, and you're in a relationship with, with them now, but they planned right. this before right. you came into the picture, then your relationship may not last. Right. So right. You, have to, you have to look into the long-term vision of someone's life, the long-term perspective of someone's life, deep into the future. In the next 15 years, how do they plan to, you know, Jim Rohn says, you got to plan things to the end sometimes. you got to plan it all the way to the end. And some people say to me, Frank, every relationship is going to end. It just depends on how well you manage it, the end. You know, you could be married for 50 years and the relationship ended in the first 10 years of marriage. You know, <laughs> like right, I see old right. people celebrating their 50th year and they say, damn, how did you last this long? And the lady said, I hated that guy the first moment I met him. In fact, this shit ended 10 years ago. I'm just hanging out because of the kids. <laughs> and we have money too. <laughs> He's kind of rich, you know. So basically, relationships and you just stay on for whatever reason you want to stay on for, you know. So, and, 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 and with respect to this questionnaire, what I'm trying to do is to find out exactly how I can take the book put it in a, in a format that individually helps the person in their real life, not fantasy, not marketing, not sales, just reality. You know, like I want to know who you are so I can actually talk to you on that level. Because the people in my life that talk to me in England and talk to me, you know, and made me move from England to L.A. And it made me cry. The people that talk to me, I have friends, that are, male friends that are, they were older, that know my mom and dad. If I'm fucking up, they get me straight. You know what I mean? So those kind of, but when I go talk to them on my birthday, usually, they shut me down. I leave there with tears. I might be drinking beers, but they tell me everything I did the whole year that was bad so that I can improve myself the next year. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so you, know, uh, you know, my dad is 70, 78. He has, you know, he has an MBA. I have an MBA. He has a bunch of Mercedes. I have a Mercedes. So there's nothing I'm doing that, that's a trip to him. So, okay, so right. basically, I have, I have people around me that are like that, whose visions are greater than mine. And, and what I want to do with this book is really put it in the hands of people that need it and then share it through our seminars so I can, I can really reach out and help them, you know, intrinsically, you know, not just, I don't want them to just read this book and end it. No, there's going to be several versions of this coming out and video with doing a documentary you know we cast already it's been cast already uh my agent is handling that right now and and she's the executive producer of the of the documentary uh francis for my and uh, you know and and you know it, this is uh, the start of something that's gonna last for a very long time well frank i definitely haven't been impressed with the book impressed with your knowledge and your wealth but uh, frank is there anything that that you have promote like outside of the book, you can give the name of the book yes. and website, all that information so that the people yes. can find you. Thank you so much. The two things we're working on right now, or well, one is really so important. It's called the American film awards. Um, it's going to be coming up next year. So we're doing some promo right now. Soon working with some AIG and working with Staples center to get the venue right for, for the show. It's really going to be amazing. It's called American film awards. I'm the producer of that. I also own the trademark of that. And so we're talking with some, networks right now that's outside of the book and something called entertainment union and francis uh, for my my agent is uh, handling that also we're trying to develop an agency that that would help 
rappers, skaters, gamers, you know, models, writers, directors. Because Sai can't do it alone. Too many, too many new <laughs> genre stars, you know, now that are. So that's that's entertainmentunion.com. And then, of course, my book, When a Man Looks at a Woman, is on frank.com, F R A N Q.com. Thank you yeah, so much, guys. Great. Well, again, we definitely appreciate you have Thank you. taking the time with us. Yes. Very good, deep conversation. Yael, anything to promote? Nothing to promote. Nope. All right. Well, just tell the people you love them then. <laughs> Duke, what you got for me? Yes. Well, okay. um, you could listen to me actually uh, talk uh, <laughs> uh, on my podcast, The Crotch Shot Radio Show. You can listen to it uh, live usually on Thursdays at 10 p.m. Or you can listen to past episodes on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, and Podcasts. Dot com, or you could go to my uh, blog, rantinglouisb.blogspot.com. I have a show coming up Tuesday, which when this when this episode is located is uploaded, it will be tonight uh, tonight for those listening at Eastville Comedy Club at 9 p.m. I will be performing, and also coming up on a show I'll be performing at Broadway Comedy Club December. 12 so uh come out and uh yeah uh, follow my facebook at louis b comedy and uh louis b one on the twitters and take it away keep it uh thank you i've started a new web series called hashtag thursday so every thursday click in it's on my website all my social media where i'll just be looking and talking about the last week's top trending topics uh all my information is on www keenanweaver.com k-e-n-a-n-w-e-a-v-e-r and as you know new york comedy club is back every sunday sunday night live 8 p.m thank you for listening keep loving keep playing bye guys